What were you guys able to accomplish at practice today? Was it a, a full practice or more of a film session thing? No, it was just uh, we got a bunch of shots up. I uh, got some individual work in. Um, that was about it. We're going to watch the film, uh, our film study uh, probably tomorrow. Um, yeah, it was uh, day we got needed to get some work in. Get a lot of, we got a lot of shots up. And um, I know we've asked you kind of like, um, you know, preparing players for the all-star break. What are you uh, planning to do? Just because I would imagine you guys can't do what you would normally do during an all-star break that would be longer and no COVID and all that. Yeah, I mean, you, you we have, I don't know, three days, three days off. We still have to, some have to test. Every, uh, we all have to test every day. Some have to test, I think, twice a day still. Um, I want to say we have to report back uh, Monday, Monday night, like five o'clock, six o'clock. Uh, head to head to Memphis, but most of the guys. I mean, some quite a few are going to stay here. Some are going to go on a, a short trip, uh, but you still have to do all the things that the NBA wants us to do is the, all the testing and all the safety protocols, things that we have to go through day to day. Christos. Hello, coach. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. My question is, how could you evaluate uh, the first half of the season so far for your team and what expectations you have and what could you like to improve to the second half of the season? Yeah, I mean, I like I like a, a lot of the things uh, that we fought through without making, you know, wool was me and uh, giving in and, and stuff that we've done, done together. Sure, I'd like to have a, I'd like to have a, had a better start, uh, but we, you know, we're playing much better um, as of late, you know, take away, you know, seven or eight minutes of that second quarter of last night. Um, but yeah, we got things to improve on. We still want to compete and, and get into the playoff race. We're, we're close, but we're not there. Uh, but we still, we, we got whatever, 30, 39 games left. Uh, so 38 after this last game for the second, second half starts. But we still, we got to get better. We still got to we got to stay healthy and get better, and we got to get a little more consistency. Da. Hey, Scotty. Um, the the February defensive numbers were were obvious were hugely better. Um, how much of that do you think is personnel, and how much do you think of that is? individual improvements uh, across the board? I, I think it's uh, like, a, I think probably a little more uh, having the continuity of the group uh, after what we've been through and individual improvement as well of being together and staying, staying uh, consistent with our work. And then we, we changed a few of our schemes up that I think has helped a few individual players uh, and it helped the group. I mean, we still, we still have room to improve there and we want to, you know, get better there. But I think the, those, th those three or four things uh, help changing the, the schemes up a little bit, having the, having the group uh, be around and staying healthy for a long stretch of games and, and then the individual pride. I think our, our guys really took the challenge. We've had a, a meeting, I don't know when it was now, 15 games ago, yeah. that we wanted to really lock in on what we need to do if we're going to change our season around. Do you think that that production defensively is sustainable? I mean, is that who you guys could be the rest of the season? I mean, that's definitely the goal. I mean, I don't, I mean, I know at one time in the last like, 12 games or top five. I don't know if that's sustainable, but I know we can be better uh, than we than we were uh, early in the year. But I think a lot to do with that is that we had a lot of things that we had to go through, let alone uh, the short 
uh, training camp with some of our younger players that need it. Normally, they would have a summer league on top of that. Yeah. And then uh, TV. You know, I don't. I don't forget about that. He's such an important part of our team, and then him getting hurt in the Miami game. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those factors happen, but I still think that we can get better defensively. I, I really, I don't know where we can, you know, end up ranking, but I think we can be more consistent. Uh, I thought like last night, I, I didn't think we were bad defensively. I think our turnovers yeah. uh, created a lot of easy opportunities for them, uh, especially in that first or that second quarter. I think we had eight turnovers in the last six minutes. Right. Penny. Hey, coach. Whoa. Um, what do you what What do you think the team uh, will try to achieve during the All Star break? Um, and I talk about, you know, chemistry wise, especially after the issues you had with COVID, and you didn't really had the time to uh, practice and uh, really get together as a group, um, and you most of the time traveling and. Uh, during uh, games, you really don't have the time to put the work on in practice. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we needed games. You know, I, I said that many times. That was that was what we needed, and we got it in February, and we're going to get it the rest of the season with the schedule. But, you know, the, the whole league needs it. Uh, we need to all stay healthy and, and get games, and hopefully we can, you know, do that. Uh, but at the all-star break, we're gonna, we, we need some rest also now. Uh, I hope the guys uh, take a break. Uh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get out of shape by missing three days of work. I mean, some of them are gonna probably stay around and, and get some work in, but you know, recharge the batteries. It's important. It's a grind and this year is more of a grind than normal, but it's definitely uh, important to rest up, regroup, and then finish up the 38 games, you know, with the way that we think that we can play and on you know, both ends of the court. I think we need to definitely take advantage of the of the little uh, semi semi break that we will have. Chase. Hey Scott, is um is Brad has continued to develop as a scorer and become a guy who can score at all three levels. How has that affected your playbook over the years? How has it sort of expanded the possibilities of your your system? Well, it, the thing I love about it is that he it's he sprinkles his scoring all over the floor. Uh, teams can't just you know focus on this area. He can the thing that I think he can even get better at is is three um, and more of them. Uh, but he's been terrific over the years and you know, it definitely adds to what we can do and I think another step in his development also him being a screen setter is the defensive they don't want to switch off on him on the screens and he's he's improved that area uh, we haven't put a lot of it in for him to do that but that's definitely something we're going to uh, tinker with especially going into the, the second half where he's setting screens and getting guys open because he's a good screen setter and teams aren't going to switch. So he can get easy opportunities for his teammates without even having the ball in his hands. All right, last question, uh, Oren. Uh, coach, is the playoff sort of the final destination for this season? Meaning, uh, you know, you make it or break it if you don't make the playoff? And does that come in congestion with trying to develop the young talent the team had drafted in the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, we want to we want to make the playoffs. We feel that you know we we have a chance to do that. It's not out of reach. You know, we're a couple of games out with 39 games to go. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of basketball left. And I know these games are going to be coming by fast. It's not a lot of practice time. So. To develop the young talent, we're going to have to do it in the film session. We're going to have to do it on the game, which is not always the ideal situation. And then we're going to have to do it as much as we can when we practice. And when we do have practice, it's not necessarily uh, Brad and, and, and Russell are going to practice a lot because of the minutes that they play. But our younger guys need to keep improving. Rui and Denny are a big part of our, our future. And 
know, they, they will have steps uh, forward and they will take a, a step back. Just hope that you can take a couple of steps uh, forward um, more than, than, than not. And I think they, I think Rui has, I think even Danny, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't played uh, particularly as well as he started the season, but that's also part of being a young player in this league. And you have to be able to fight through that because adversity helps. It helps you become a better player. And if you don't, I mean, everybody goes through it. It's not like if you don't go through it, everybody, even even Brad will have, you know, he's had already uh, uh, maybe two moments in this season that he hasn't played uh, particularly well for a game or two. Uh, but yeah, I think our developing our young players is still important, but uh, that's that's still the goal is to develop our players while we're fighting to make a playoff. The first half of the season comes to an end. Tomorrow you have uh, the, the last game of the first half. How could you evaluate your first half of the season and what would you like to improve? I think it's been, um, I think, I think it's been good. I mean, I had my ups and downs, you know, it's my first league and my first year in the league. Um, but I think it was good for me. I learned a lot of things, a lot of new things. I, uh, faced, I faced against a lot of good players and, uh, I think all, all in general, it made me a, a better player, you know, um, getting this experience on the court, playing time that I've been playing, uh, the moments I had throughout the season, it all, um, always good for me to learn and experience new things, you know. And uh, have you got any talk with uh, Coach Feropoulos through the, the last months? Um, me and Coach are in a good touch. I didn't uh, talk to him uh, in quite a while. Um, he got a lot of things to deal back there so in Maccabi, so I don't, I don't want to interrupt his work too much, but uh, I'm following him, following the games, and I'm wishing him uh, the best. So. Thank you. Chase. Hey, Denny. Um, what's the line like for you uh, between trying to be aggressive with the ball and also sort of playing a specific role for this team? Do you find, what's that decision making like process for you? Can you, um... Can you say the question? Like, I didn't really understand. So um, what's it like for you wanting to be aggressive when you get the ball, but also playing within the offensive system and playing a specific role? Um, I mean, my role right now is my role. I mean, I'm, I'm doing whatever I, I can to help the team win and, and what the coach needs me to do on the court. And, and you know, we, we're, we're winning games. We're winning games, we're playing good, so I mean, that's what I'm going to keep doing. Um, hopefully, you know, my role is going to be bigger and bigger when, when the years go out and I'm going to improve as a player. But uh, for now, I'm just reading the situation. If, if there is a game, I need to be more aggressive with the ball, be more aggressive with the ball. If there's, if there's games that I won't touch the ball as much, I won't touch the ball. You know, it's whatever, like, the situation may be and what the coach is going to decide. Um, I'm, I'm just filling my role as best as, much as I can. And uh, what is adjusting to the NBA? How, how is that compared to when you first adjusted to the Euro League? I know you've talked about how you learned a lot through that experience. It's actually very similar. It's a very similar situation for me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm older now and, and I have much more experience and I played pro for, for, for three years. So it's different coming here uh, than being a rookie first time with, with the senior level. But it for sure was uh, similar. I didn't play as much. I didn't play as much. I barely played. But um, yeah, it's, it's getting used to everything. Getting used to to amount amount of games. Getting used to the pace. Getting used to the physicality. Um, but at the end of the day, I think um, I'm I'm adjusting pretty quick, and uh, I'm working very hard. So, I mean, I just hope to um, keep improving. Quinn. Hey, Denny, um, a lot of games we're watching, you're getting in foul trouble early, but it seems like you're vertical on most of your defensive possessions. Has there been a referee or a coach um, throughout this process of just the season that has tried to call in these fouls on you? Because it seems like your hands are straight up in most situations and scenarios, or is it just something that you have to continue to learn on your own? No, I mean, you know, you know how it is for rookies in this league, and, and what, what can I do? It's frustrating. 
I'm trying to play defense or trying to earn my minutes. And by me getting fouls, it, it doesn't really help me, you know. Um, trying to trying to make make the team better with my defense, but when you're getting call on everything, it's not. You can't do much about it. Personally, what I think, I think we our refs need to call a call regardless if it's a rookie or I think rules are rules. If, if you agree with me, right? I mean, if there's a rule that that this this thing is a foul, so you need to call this a foul every every possession. I think, but. I mean that, that's what it is, and, and I'm gonna face keep facing it, and it's not it's not gonna break me. I'm I'm gonna improve it into. So. And how I know we've kind of asked you very often how it's been playing alongside you know veteran guys like Brad and Russ, but is there something specific that you learned from you know seeing Russ struggle early and turning it around as of late, and just watching his development and how he handles adversity that you can apply to your own journey so far in the NBA? For sure. Um, the good thing about Russ is that he, regarding what time we play, regarding what happened the same day, um, bad, good, he, he he's just gonna he's just gonna come and play as hard as he can. He doesn't he doesn't care what happened before the game, after the game, whatever. He when the game comes, he's he's locked in, and and you see his mentality since we wake up in the morning and eat breakfast. So. Um, yeah, this, this is the kind of mentality you want as a player. Um, but yeah, both, even Brad, um, both players are very professional uh, leaders. They always talk, they always always want to help, always, always um, answer questions. So, I mean, it's only learn from them. Neil? Hey, Denny, obviously you've worked really closely with uh, Coach David Atkins. Um, so far while you've been here. Just what has your relationship kind of been like and how has he helped you so far? Uh, DA helped me a lot. Um, since I got here, he, we, we're talking tons. We're talking very, very, um, very much about um, how I'm going to improve. Um, if I have bad games, I'll talk to him about it. and He's going to explain to me what I did wrong. We're watching a lot of film. And uh, he just know my mentality, you know, he's just learning how I how I react to things, how, how what's my game style, and he and he, he does a great job of, of developing it and adding more things to my game. So I think uh, our relationship is, is good and, and it's going to get better throughout the years. So. Hey Russ, Scott was telling us that you and Brad, you know, talk to Denny a lot and you know encouragement, teaching, all those kinds of things. Where have you seen him grow? You know, obviously it's only been a short amount of time for him in the NBA. Um, he's getting better. You know, he's young, man. It's a new, new experience for him. NBA is a different league, um, but he's done a better job of just listening, understanding where he can be effective. Um, but he's done a good job. Chase. Hey, Russ, how, how do you guys make sure that these last two losses aren't the start of something bigger and just end up being a blip on the radar? Um, just come out and compete. We know what we need to do. We know the, the recipe. Um, it's not like we don't know what it takes to win. Um, it's our job to make sure we do it. And uh, the Wizards have improved a lot with their rebounding this year. And, you know, obviously you're a big part of that. How did rebounding become such a big part of your game as a point guard? Um, you know, I want to make sure that I can impact the game in many ways. Um, rebounding is probably um, something I take a lot of pride in and positioning um, as easy as it may look and seem, but positioning and the will to get the ball before somebody else is um, something that I'll, you know, learn at a young age. And it's something that um, I try to implement and keep in my game and make sure that I, I do it every night and try to be the best at it. Yeah. Russ, you, you've competed at a high level your whole career trying to win championships. And I wonder what, if anything, felt recognizable to you this last month with this team in term when, when they start, when you all start winning games, were there things that were like, yeah, that's what teams that are really good are supposed to do or, or do consistently? Um, you talking about for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, we, especially for me, uh, always try to, when things are going wrong, um, I like to put the pressure on my shoulders to make sure that um, I can try to find ways to, to make 
where my teammates better help my coaches out, help the organization out uh, to make sure that we are moving in the direction that we need to be. Um, and especially this past month, I just try to find ways to lead different ways, um, communicate differently, try to get through to uh, my teammates in, in different ways. And I believe uh, some of those ways have worked. Uh, still, everything's still a work in progress. Um, and honestly, at the same time, I work on myself. Um, yeah. You know, along those lines, but that's the difficult part about this job, um, which I really embrace and enjoy. Um, but it's something that I kind of look forward to, especially leading, you know, ending the first half and into the second half of it. Did the did the road trip and the success on the road trip make you think any differently about this team this year? Um, it definitely showed me a lot, even in the past month or so, just that what we're capable of. Like, and to me, I, you know, I believe this every year, but. I believe that when we play our best, we can beat any team. Uh, we've been in every game against all the best teams. Um, it's just small details that we got to pay attention to, and that's a part of my job is make sure that I implement my experience and get in those situations for the guys here. Kellen? Hey, Russ. Uh, I think a couple games ago, there was like a video clip of Tro you and Troy talking on, you know, during a game, and Looks like you're giving him some pointers. He maybe he was asking you some questions about, uh, you know, how to approach the defense. What what's it like playing on a team and being a leader on the team with like some younger players? And how do you how do you kind of do you approach each you know play each one of your teammates differently in terms of your leadership, or is it kind of you're just setting the tone overall? Uh, it's different. Everything's different. Um, leading is uh, like I mentioned earlier in the year. I, I, leading is. It has a lot of different components um, that goes into it. Um, I take it very personally. Um, it takes a lot of pride to be able to make sure that I'm giving my teammates the best um, that I have. Uh, I don't have all the right answers um, at all, but I do know one thing is that going out and competing and trying to find ways to help guys out um, is something that I can bring and bring to the table um, for each individual, um, each guy responds differently to, to leadership and the way you lead them. Uh, so that's something that I have to figure out and study figuring out the guys on our team. And, uh, that's a part of leadership. And that's something that, uh, you know, I've learned over the years of doing this league and that's something that I take pride in. And do you feel like you're starting to get to know and understand each each of your teammates pretty well by this point of the season? Definitely. Um, figuring out what, what makes them go, what pisses them off, what makes them happy. Um, and that's a part of my job because uh, you want to be able to get the best out of them, uh, even if it may not uh, feel great for them or feel great for me or the best for me. Um, I want to be able to get the best out of my teammates um, because I believe it just eventually works, especially for a long run. A lot of young guys on this team, they're going to be in the league a long time. Uh, starting good habits early um, is very beneficial. Thanks, Russ. Ava? Russ, you mentioned um, how much you've also had to kind of work on yourself this season. Wondering just after coming into the new organization, moving cities, all that, do you feel, I'm sure you're never satisfied, but do you feel closer to settled or closer to where you want to be with this team? Um, no, even not yet. Not yet. I, 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 every day I'm trying to figure out, you know, when we lose and lose games, even last night, just trying to figure out how to be better, um, what more I can do to, to implement on a team, on an organization to make sure we're moving in the right direction. Um, but we're right there, you know, and I'm very optimistic about, you know, where we are as a team. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm playing my best and feeling my best to be able to give the team and my teammates and organization the best that I have to give us the best chance to win the basketball game. Thanks, Russ. Matt. Hey, Russ. Uh, Scott was saying last night that he would like to see your turnovers kind of dip to the to maybe the high threes instead of where there are. I'm just curious, do you see a common link between your turnovers this year? Is there one oh, yeah. aspect that, um, you know, you're staying with them? No, you know, I'm, you know, honestly, man, the turnover thing, uh, like, I honestly, since I've been in the league, there's been some times where there's some bad turnovers. Uh, but I, I know that I'm trying to make the right play. So, honestly, I don't, I don't really – it don't bother me. No, there's some that are bad looks and some that I shouldn't make plays, but some when I'm trying to make the right play um, and guys drop the ball. It's not on me. It just happened to be my turnover, but I can live with those mistakes of trying to make them and make the game easy for my teammates. And, 
uh, find ways to, to get them the ball where they need to get the ball to. So um, let's do a better job of picking those spots a little better um, kind of as the game goes along. Yesterday, I had way too many, uh, for sure, too many turnovers in a short period of time. But uh, I thought I did a good job in the second half. I, I, don't, I had one maybe the second half yesterday. Uh, but just making sure that I was able to make the easy reads sometimes and I'm not, you know, forcing and trying to uh, make the home run plays. Yeah, what is your adjustment process like? Because you, you know, most of your turnovers do come in the first. You're pretty good at adjusting from half to half, it seems like. Yeah, I just, it depends. The game will tell you. The game will tell me uh, what to do. Um, the adjustment process is just figuring out what plays are, how teams are guarding, uh, what's open, what's not. Um, and it's also my teammates learning me. Uh, you know, I make the game is moving fast for me. Sometimes it's a lot faster for them. So sometimes positioning um, is different. Like, uh, you know, when I was in Oklahoma City, I played with people with people a lot a lot longer, so the turnover wasn't this high. Uh, just getting in position, getting guys in position. And there's a lot of things that go goes into it, uh, which I have to learn and figure out as well. You know, guys like the ball, running, spacing, um, and that stuff will uh, will change, and that's an easy fix for me. Chris Miller. Hey Russ, if you don't mind, I want to ask you about the school that you're building in LA. And how important is it not just giving the kids a building, but the curriculum in which they are learning, maybe things that they might not have learned in another public school. Are, are you digging into that as much as providing a space for them? Yeah, you know what, Chris? I mean, I, I, I like to dig into everything. I like to get to the roots of um, our problems in our society and our world and our system, education system and every aspect of uh, our system in education is a huge problem, especially in underserved and underserved communities of, of color. Uh, necessarily over the years, it's been, you know, schools and reading and test scores have been bad um, just for school system overall. And I wanted to be able to dive in and have an opportunity to be able to do something, especially in my hometown, but not just that for the underserved and inner city, because that's where I grew up, um, and make sure that we create a curriculum where they have all the access of all the private schools, all the nicer schools that's not in the city. Um, but if you live in the city, you have nice books, you have uh, curriculums of uh, things you can do and educational programs and job opportunities and be able to create uh, different things for the kids of the community. Um, it's something that um, I want to be the one to do that. I want to lead the way uh, for our underserved communities in all aspects. And uh, I will make sure I, uh, I'm going to do that uh, uh, starting especially with education. Appreciate you, man. Much respect on that. Quinn. Hey, Russ, I wanted to piggyback off a question from earlier. You've carried that role of leader and mentor to a lot of different players throughout this your time in the league. Who was the Russell Westbrook to Russell Westbrook when you were coming up in the league? Uh, I would probably say uh, when I was in the league, probably Nick Collison when I was in Oklahoma. Uh, Nick, um, you know, he's like a brother to me he, he he helped me a lot in many ways that he probably don't even know just in leading and watching him and understanding how to be professional and understanding life outside of basketball and using understanding um 